We're in Boulder, Colorado, underneath the beautiful Rocky Mountains. But we're not on vacation, we're here to have our grommet manufactured. We're sitting here in the conference room with Steve Hirsch from Hirsch Precision Products, seeing how our grommet is going to be manufactured. Yeah, and we've uh, taken our drawing in the last video. We had a little cartoon picture of the grommet, and now we have formalized the drawing, and we have put a title block on it, uh, formalized the drawing, uh, give uh, Steve a model, and we have also have a 3D printing of the part. And we come to talk about, uh, Steve, uh, you've, you've had a chance to look at this drawing, and. Uh, wonder uh, how the geometric tolerancing looks. I know you're an expert. Uh, he has his geometric tolerancing uh, standard, ASME standard, and the Fundamentals Geotel Pro book. And uh, maybe uh, tell us what you think of the drawing. The drawing was excellent. Uh, the datum structure, the way you have it laid out, was very clear how this part is going to function. And uh, we, we could identify easily the, the surfaces that have uh, important profiles, tight tolerances, and those that were less critical to you. So uh, that, that made it very easy for us to settle on a, on a manufacturing process. What did you come up with for this one? Well, we looked at uh, a, a five-axis machining where we would hold one edge of the part and make the whole thing, and we considered uh, three-axis milling and determined that we could hold those tolerances using the three-axis process, and that was a more economical way to approach the part. And how would you do that with a three-axis then? So the, the process we came up with was uh, essentially we would have uh, some extra material, approximately a quarter inch, below here your data may surface. So we would be holding on to the part there. That would allow us to produce the holes, the entire profile, all of these surfaces uh, in, in one processing. And this is a double lock vise. So then the part would would actually flip over to the second station and we would locate on uh, what you have as datum B here and nest the part supporting under this here and just take a number of cuts removing, uh, finally producing the datum A surface. So I see that you're producing the datum A surface last then. Exactly. Uh, when we inspect it, of course, we, wanna, we want to follow your datum structure, but for manufacturing that isn't always the most efficient way to approach the part. Now, I guess you could uh, maybe hold it on two holes, too, a, a blank, drill the holes, and then uh, grab the holes. Is that possible, too? And we had considered that uh, where we'd actually produce data A first, produce the holes, and then and, and hold the part uh, by the holes. Uh, in that instance, we just felt that we didn't have enough uh, rigidity holding that part and that uh, we would have to take an awful lot of small cuts to produce it. So the approach I described first seemed to be most economical. Uh, Steve, uh, we've looked at a number of different suppliers and uh, we chose you, and, but we had another uh, supplier say that they would make the two parts in one piece. And after they made the part in one piece, then they would take a wire EDM and then uh, cut the part in half. Now we thought that was very costly and expensive and time consuming. I just wonder what you think about that. And I think as you described it, uh, they would have this, this part uh, produced and then they would run it through the wire, uh, rotate the part 90 degrees and, uh, and pass it on through. Yeah, it, it turned out that that was a very expensive process, took long, so we decided against that. Uh, but uh, I think uh, your idea of the uh, three axis uh, sounds really good. Now is a five axis an option also? It, it, it was, um, you know, we, we were, uh, in that instance, we would have put some extra material on, on this end of the part where we could rotate the part, uh, finish all of the critical surfaces at one time, and then come back and, and, and machine off our, our holding material, uh, blending to the, to the radii. But uh, with the tolerances that were allowed on the print, we did not feel that that was going to be necessary. And we just, in the end, didn't feel that uh, five axis was really required for this part, that it was a more economical to approach it with the three. Yeah, we like more economical. All right. Yeah, that's good. Now, uh, how will you make sure the part is good for us uh, as far as inspection and verification? I think you have a full inspection plan here, too. That uh... We did. We, we ballooned a print. Um, so we've, we've, um, we've put balloons on each of the... Uh, uh, feature, feature control con frames? Yes, mm -hmm. the feature control frames. 
and uh, then our CMM printout <clears throat> is going to correlate to those balloons, so we'll be able to read that printout and know which features we're seeing results for. Yeah, that's good because we didn't really want the basic dimension checked. We wanted the geometric characteristics checked. Exactly. Now, I imagine uh, if you noticed uh, some of the tolerances, for example, on the three radiuses, that was a little tighter tolerance. And then on the outside profile was uh, a larger tolerance. That one we had down at the title block, that was uh, 30 thousandths. I mean, is there any difference in the way you would verify those? We'll, we'll hear from the inspector on this, but um, I believe uh, he plans to uh, scan all of the surfaces. So he can determine um, a number of points he will take as he scans the surface and the speed with which he scans it. So I, th I would imagine he would take more points and go slower where we have the critical surfaces and then move faster um, over the surfaces that are, that are less important. Well, that looks good. That's ideal. That looks good, doesn't it? Sounds great. So I think you'll have us ready for a couple weeks then. We will be ready for you. Would you guys like to see the shop before you head yeah, out? Yeah, we would. Yeah, we'd like to take a little quick uh, view of the shop. Can we go out there? Excellent. Let's do that. Okay. Well, here we are back at Hirsch two weeks later. While I was out at the machine, I thought we'd sit here with our programmer, Rick, and he could show us how the CNC programming works. I'll show you how we proceeded with that. We imported the model in, examined it, compared it to the print we had, make sure everything matched, brought all my tools in, defined them, started defining my tool paths, and here we can see we faced the part. We're roughing it out right now. Boy, I can see how important the integrity of the model is, making sure everything is built to the mean of the dimensions. It makes it a whole lot easier to program and get a consistent part of, off every time. I see you're leaving a little bit of material there. Is that for the second operation to do? Yes, this is the excess material we we're actually holding on to in the machine. We're now doing the finish pass. Here we cut the finish these datum along here, nice and slow. Make sure we get all the corners broken. And basically that sequence is done. So now you have the second operation to do the backside then? Yes, correct. Here's our second operation. We just flipped it over. We'll run through this simulation. Here's our excess material. Just need to machine the excess off the outside. Face and it and chamfer it. One final thing for that data man. And it's done. All right, Rick, that looks great. Well, let's take a look at what Al's doing over near the machine. I'm out in the shop here with the machinist, Mamtaz. Uh, Scott was back in the programming, sent the uh, program down to the Acoma 3 axis, and we're going to see how the part is produced now. Mamtaz, could you show us how this thing works? Absolutely. We are making this part out of two sequences. As you see, sequence one is on the far side. Uh, we machine sequence one first. And then we're going to flip it over and load it on sequence two, which is actually our done part. Now when it's loaded, I notice that uh, when you flip it over, what you actually do is you push it up against one side and it's uh, held against with a pocket against Absolutely. the side. Absolutely. So this is actually our datum. We're going to locate it against the stop uh, on our datum. And our stop is on the left side of, of our jaws. We're going to push them down and tie the uh, device and done. And so this machining operation, what it does is it produces the top part on one and the bottom part on the other. Uh, absolutely. On the upper jaws is sequence one and the lower jaws is sequence two. 
So we are, I'm going to take the uh, sequence one out, put a blank on the sequence one. So this is our finished parts. Okay, we're I can take, take it out. This part came out from sequence one. We're gonna rotate it under 80 degrees and put it on the sequence two jaws. While I put them on sequence two, make sure the datum is actually against the stop and all the way back. This works it down to a special uh, limit? Uh, yes, 150 foot pounds. All right. Okay, that's terrific. I guess we're all set, ready to make a new part now. Absolutely, you're ready. All right, sounds good. Well, we were just out of the machine shop with Al seeing how the part is to be produced. So now we're in the inspection lab here with Gary, and he's going to show us a little bit on the CMM program. Also, we have a uh, print to show uh, all the different bubbles that will have to be inspected and all the different features that will have on a CMM program. So we brought in the model here that we're using in manufacturing. We're going to use that as we set up our inspection as well. Uh, I can pick out the planes to pick out the datums, datum A and then datum B and C here. And I set up the features as I'm going to draw, uh, inspect them. And then the characteristics match up with the bubbles on the print. Okay, so after I have it going, I can watch it go. You can see how it is going underneath to take data May. A couple places. And then it also inspects these planes, to set up the profile and set up the datum references there. I see you're using a scanning CMM. How do you decide how fast to go and how many points to take? Well, on the things that are tight, we have got tight profiles on these planes, and so I'll go every 20 thou or something like that on that. On something where we have wide open position tolerances as well as size tolerances where those bolt holes are, it'll go a lot faster. And I'll take every 70 thou or something like that when it runs. Then we get the results here, and it lines up with the bubbles on the print as well with the features, nominals, and actuals over here. Okay, that looks great. Let's see it run in real life. Well, this is the Zeiss machine, and it has the program imported from our Calypso software. Now, I noticed that you rested the part on a couple of pedestals there. What are those for? Uh, so that we can access data may underneath the part and still have room to inspect the rest of the part as well. I noticed that you're also using a star probe instead of just a single probe. And so that we have access to these points underneath with these side probes and I don't have to do a tool change to go to a separate one. Now why would you use one probe over another? Well for the size things on this everything's a similar size so I can use one probe feature that gets into all the features, has access to all the features. Uh, so you can see here that the profiles are in tolerance. Well we have the CMM report here. It looks like everything is well within the tolerances, all green. I think this looks great. Thanks a lot Gary. Thank you. We're at the final stage here of uh, manufacturing the part. We're now here after anodizing and we're going to see the laser marking. Welcome back, Scott and Al. We've got the project wrapped up and ready for your inspection. Boy, these parts really look nice. I, uh Really appreciate you uh, taking us through the whole process, you know, from design to manufacturing to quality. And uh, they uh, 
sure that they met our design requirements. Uh, we looked, looked at your inspection reports and we're really pleased. It's, uh, the anodizing looks beautiful on them, uh, the laser marking. I really appreciate it. It was a good job working with a real professional. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was very fun. We really enjoyed it. Yeah, parts look great. Thanks a lot, Steve. Thank you, Scott.